and YouTube is live. Webinar is live. Quiet on the set. All right. Wait, wait. wait. Uh, who will give us the time? I will keep time for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. And we are live. Thanks, Anissa. Yes, yes. Thank you, MC. All right. Welcome, friends. Let's get started. All right. Let's give it a moment for the room to fill up. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for waiting. And we're so excited today to have um, some very knowledgeable people with us today as part of our Filipino American History Month events. Today we'll be talking to Abraham Ignacio, our own Filipino American librarian and coming out of the main library and MC from, um, he is a, what's known as a community historian, MC Canales of Soma Filipino uh -huh. Community Center. Um, so a few announcements and we'd like to pay tribute and land acknowledgement today. The San Francisco Public Library acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramitra Shaloni peoples for the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. As uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramitish community. We have a couple events coming up uh, that we'd love for you to know about. One of those is tomorrow, a nature boost, uh, connecting the dots, near woods, hidden figures. And this is all about LGBTQ figures working throughout uh, nature and in the national park system and specifically in the near woods area. And our final Filipino American History Month event will be celebrating the work of artist Lydia Ortiz, who is our artist spotlight. And she does amazing, gorgeous and vibrant work. And her work can be seen all over the place, New York Times, um, many, many places. And check out her Instagram to see um, all of her recent posts. San Francisco Public Library has a reading campaign called On the Same Page, which has been uh, going on for many, many years. And this is where we encourage all of San Francisco to read the same book at the same time. And it's a bi-monthly. So September and October is the Undocumented Americans. A very nice read, very great read, pretty deep. Um, also uh, delves into, you know, the medical life and the mental history, the mental health of our undocumented Americans. Um, you know, so often we see the front covers of the news stories and um, we see people being deported, but the stories go so much deeper than that. And uh, Carla Cornejo Villavincencio's book really delves into what, you know, the, the lives of undocumented Americans and not just the uh, surface of what we normally see. So I encourage you all to pick up this book and you should be able to pick it up at all library locations right now. And Carla will be in conversation with Jonathan Blitzer on the 26th, coming right up next week, that's Tuesday. And you can always join us on Monday before the conversation for the book club, where we will talk about this book. All right, and then today, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to the San Francisco Public Library Zone, Abraham Ignacio. Take it away, Abe. Okay. Thank you, Anissa, for introducing us and stuff. So here, yeah, here we are today. We're gonna have a conversation just between um, MC and myself to talk about the Philippine American War and San Francisco's hidden relationship to it and, and maybe get people interested in, in revisiting and re and trying to understand the Philippine American War because you know it really is a pivotal moment for Filipinos in the Philippines and you know pretty much why we are here is because of that war of colonization and, and conquest so uh, now let's start it off MC do you want to start off with the, our introduction you can introduce yourself and I'll follow okay so my name is MC Canlas 
I live now in San Francisco for almost 34 years, and my base is San Francisco, so I'm also part of the South of Market uh, or Soma Filipinas, which is the Filipino Cultural Heritage District. And also, I'm currently connected with the Episcopal Community Services as manager of the Adult Coordinated Entry, which is uh, housing the homeless population in San Francisco. And at the same time, I'm also working at the Filipino American Development Foundation. I'm a member of the board, but at the same time, I'm their cultural strategist because I've been in this community for many years. So, of course, my hobby is history because I graduated from the University of the Philippines and I taught uh, history. And then when I moved to the United States, I want to continue my interest in promoting history. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, MC. So, again, I'm Abraham Ignacio. I'm uh, the third. Um, here, let me do a quick screen share here. Share. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's my screen showing up. Screen yep. share. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the third of the Filipino American Center librarians. Before me was uh, Mitchell Young son. Um, and then be, uh, the original uh, was Estella Manila. So we've been uh, having Filipino American Center librarians since 1996. That's when the center opened. Um, and um, we've been, you know, the stewards of the Filipino American experience here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I, I got my MLIS from San Jose State University. I got my BA from um, Cal um, in Ethnic Studies, Asian American Studies. Uh, but uh, my own history goes back in terms of why I got involved with the Filipino American War, like MC was mentioning, is because I, I like history, but also because I was growing up during the 60s and 70s during the you know, uh, civil rights struggle, the black power movement, the yellow power movement, the brown power movement. And one of the things a lot of folks are reading back then, especially if you're uh, Filipinos or Asian American was America's in the heart. So my real inspiration to getting involved with history and, and wanting to learn more later uh, was uh, Carlos Bulasan. So I, I Oh, a debt of gratitude to uh, Manon Carlos for uh, getting me on this road. So, yeah. So, shall we begin with the MC? So, what got us interested because uh, this month, October, is considered the uh, Filipino American History Month. But at the same time, if you see the San Francisco calendar, we celebrate two History and Heritage Month. One in October, which is connected to the promotion that the Filipino American uh, National Historical Society promoted uh, the October as the Filipino History Month. But at the same time, when I was uh, doing my column in the newspaper, I said, I, I also prefer the Asian Heritage Month in May. Oh. Because I said, why we are here it's not because of the Moro Bay <laughs> uh, yeah. arrival of the right. uh, of the Luzones Indiones <laughs> Indios, but because America occupied the Philippines. Right. And the commemoration of that uh, occupation, or we call it later, we will discuss this, the colonization <laughs> of the Philippines was memorialized at the heart of San Francisco, which is the Union Square. Uh -huh. And then, and that's the Manila, Battle of Manila Bay, which is May 1st. Uh, and it's uh, uh, now in the Dewey Monument. That's why when, when the San Francisco Public Library invited me because perhaps they heard that during the History Day last year, of the History Day in San Francisco, my topic I provided them is markers and monuments. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the markers and monuments, because the reason why perhaps uh, I got uh, attracted to San Francisco was because of its connection to Philippine history uh -huh. compared to when I migrated and I started in LA. 
And then, of course, LA, you have Disney, Universal Studio. But then when I discovered San Francisco, I said, oh, this is the place. And also when you go to Presidio, you got reminded of the John Hay. I said, oh, it reminds me. And of course, Baguio, because I used to teach in Baguio. I said, uh -huh. oh, this is the place I can uh, reminisce my 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 teaching profession of history, oh, okay. something like that. So when I discovered the thing, I proposed to the San Francisco Library, what topic will I say? I said, it should be something related to the forgotten uh, episode or perhaps the legacy of San Francisco that is not uh, mentioned most of the time is the Imperial War. Mm -hmm. The role of San Francisco in this uh, imperial war at the turn of the century. That's why if you if you see the introduction of the uh, of the library, I will show you the the introduction. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So I will read it. Uh, in 1902, this is the uh, topic that will perhaps entice people to listen to us. In 1902, U.S. President yeah. Theodore Roosevelt proclaimed the end of the war. That same year, a 95-foot-tall column was erected in Union Square to honor Admiral Dewey's 1898 victory over the Spanish at Manila Bay. President McKinley himself visited San Francisco to break ground for the monument, illustrating the importance of the war to the United States. Unfortunately, most Americans only remember the Spanish-American War from April 21 to August 13, 1898, while 15 years in the Philippines was erased from people's memory, not only among Americans, but also among Filipinos, our kababayan. Uh -huh. Forgetting was well, officially sanctioned, sanctioned, as Daniel Emerwar highlighted in the introduction of this book, How to Hide an Empire, A History of Greater United States. One of the truly distinctive features of the United States empire is how persistently ignored it has been. It's long overdue to reveal this imperial war. So our conversation today is connected to that. So we wanted to to invite our listeners to continue the discourse and conversation. I suggested also to the San Francisco Library that instead of me lecturing, just like what I did during the History Day uh, in San Francisco last year, I said, I'd rather make it a conversation because there are many people just like Abe who has his own passion and he was able to produce with, with the support of other scholars a beautiful book and perhaps uh, uh, Abe will also share the, the book, uh, the forget, uh, forgotten book, okay? So that's yeah. the message for today. Then that's the conversation for today. Uh, MC, MC, may I interrupt? We are seeing only the window for the library. We're not seeing the correct thing. You're not seeing the YouTube uh, thing? No, we're seeing the, uh, we see the library website. So I think you need to switch windows. Okay. Anyway, oh. so I, I, I read it anyway, the thing, okay. Yes. So uh, at least I, I read it. So, so perhaps uh, Abby can start on the, why were you, uh, what led you to produce the forgotten book? Yeah, uh, okay, so let's, let me get a smaller screen here. Hold on. I need to share. Oh, okay, uh, this, so I'm gonna just stop your screen sharing and I'll continue a screen share, MC? Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. All right, so as uh, MC was saying, how, how did, how did me, a uh, Filipino American, get involved with the thing? Because um, one of the things that struck me as I was doing my ethnic studies uh, work was, was this thing, was editorial cartoons. I've had a real passion for editorial cartoons since the 70s, because uh, as a, I'll read this uh, quote from the History Institute of Ohio State, Edi editorial cartoons 
Oh, uh, sorry, I'll share. Sorry. You share, um, you see my screen now, right? Editorial cartoons? Yeah, we're seeing it. Okay, sorry. Still getting the hang of this. Sorry, folks, uh, bear with us. Editorial cartoons provide a window into history by showing us what people were thinking and talking about a given time and place. The History Institute, Ohio State and, uh, University. And this particular cartoon is called The Forbidden Book. It was uh, shown in the, uh, produced for the Chicago Chronicle. And uh, we were able to get a copy of it from the Literary Digest. But anyway, this is, forms the origin story behind why we called it The Forbidden Book. As you can see with this cartoon, it says uh, it's under lock and key. Um, President William McKinley is holding the truth, the, the truth behind the Filipino, uh, the true history of the Filipino War from Uncle Sam, meaning the United States, and it's for his private use only. So there was censorship back then, uh, but the U.S. Army was censoring the dispatches of the uh, reporters that were uh, reporting on the ground in the Philippines and stuff. So that was a, a battle to find out, you know, like uh, later on what was going on and stuff. But so. This really became the uh, origin story for why we called the forbidden book the forbidden book because the long history has been either forbidden or forgotten. And uh, so that, that led me on to kind of organize, finding, looking for all these cartoons because from 1898 to 1902, the official part of the war, the American public uh, lived, eat, and drank the Philippine uh, conflict in the Philippines. And we're learning all sorts of new information about the Philippines, the Filipinos, but then also this war that was being conducted on their behalf to, uh, as later on we'll talk about, to civilize and educate the Filipinos to good government, to civilization and what have you through. These cartoons provide important, as it's so, a window to see what the American public was uh, learning about or, or thinking about, but also what the decision makers at the highest level, whether it be the president, the secretary of the state or the generals, what, what were the conduct of the war? You'll, we can get some um, insight into that through the cartoons. So yeah, let's stop sharing. Okay, MC, did you wanna continue? Yeah. So that's good, uh, that's an inspiration because your book was very instrumental also in, in uh, discussing the topic because in the Philippines and also here, we're not able to see those cartoons, yeah. but then we know that they were during the time. So it means the public was being educated by the cartoons during those days because the newspaper is the medium as today is the social media. So yeah. therefore, uh, the molding of the minds no, yeah. of the American public is through the cartoon and the way they depicted us in the cartoon was important or is important. But at the same time, in my case, I was educated in the Philippines. Oh. And we have history classes in the Philippines. But then if you see, at least I'm speaking of those who were in grade school in the 60s and the 70s, the history of the Philippines, if you're following the textbook, you won't get even to the American occupation. Oh. So because the discussion is mostly on the... On the uh, Spanish uh, period. Uh -huh. And then when they read on the American period, it's just a summary that they bring us the schools, etc. They yeah. never mention about the Philippine American War. It's not even mentioned in the textbook before. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, uh, part of the colonization no, of uh -huh. the Philippines is the colonial education. Right. So during our school days, you're not even allowed to speak your native language. I'm a Kapampangan, uh -huh. and you have to speak and learn how to speak English, and then they will uh, penalize you for speaking in that. They call it dialect, although they're oh. languages. And then you will write them, I will not speak in my native language or dialect, something oh like that, or you'll be fine, something like that. Yeah. Of course, the other side of that, because I'm talking of the 60s, 
Uh -huh. There's the Peace Corps where uh -huh. you have teachers coming uh -huh. from America uh -huh. and introducing you mathematics or yeah, they're introducing mathematics because before is arithmetic and then now mathematics. Perhaps the Thomasites were also responsible later or earlier in our community, but during the 60s, it was the Peace Corps. Yeah. And then they're giving food, especially the oatmeal and the milk with the shake hands no, oh, of Filipino right. and U.S. Uh -huh. So you're seeing this uh, uh, English, the same time the Peace Corps and the same time this one, but you cannot read them in our history. Even oh. when I go to the University of the Philippines, my my major was engineering, I'm, and then my fraternity is Gamma Sigma Pi. So it's, uh -huh. it's really a fraternity for uh, scientific progress of uh -huh. engineering. But then on my third year, I got this uh, major uh, career, not crisis, but uh, uh, mind changing because uh -huh. I said to myself, am I in the right uh, uh, position? Because the the parity rights before uh, the framework was that the 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 possession of the United States will be transferred to the Philippines. So the natural resources should be in the hands of Filipinos because for many years, the U.S. exploited our natural resources. So I thought right. myself, oh, mining engineering may be a good thing because I, I want to manage our natural resources. But then at the same time, uh, in 1975, Constantino introduces the, or introduced the new book Oh, yeah. Past revisited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for showing go. that. Yeah. And then uh, Constantino, unlike the previous book of Saide and uh, and they're concentrated more on the Spanish time. This one introduces more of uh, the colonization of America. And yeah. and also when I was in high school, I was introduced to the pamphlets of. Uh, uh, Constantino, the miseducation of the oh. Filipino people, the origin of, of the meat, veneration without understanding. So those kind of stuff, that, that's why I said, oh, there are many things I need to learn. So uh -huh. that's why this got me interested. And, and then when I moved to San Francisco, the thing that I never studied in the Philippines, but now physically you will see them. That's why I said, oh, San Francisco is the best uh, educational uh, environment uh -huh. to understand the history of the Filipinos in the Philippines and also yeah. in America. So so that's why now the topic is Philippine-American War. So let's discuss uh -huh. the Philippine-American War because it wasn't well uh, thought out. So let's see how we can uh, start our understanding of that. The, the first is the naming of the war. Uh -huh. Okay, perhaps you can explain. I, I, what's your in your forgotten book? What was the term you use, or what was the term you discover as you see the the cartoons? Yeah. Um, here, let me bring up a, a a slide I'll share around the naming of the war. Hold on here. Let me get to it. All right, come on. Sorry. Yeah, because uh, just to follow up with MC about uh, the book of uh, Bernardo Constantino, I think he was the foremost nationalist historian back then, and he was really putting forward um, Filipinos uh, and trying to understand Filipino history from the point of the Filipino people and stuff, and and it. For me, it was also very mind blowing and, and a revelation to read uh, Philippines, a past revisited. And then he continued later on with this book also too, uh, a, a continuing past. So he really does a, a very a thorough and, and a critique of uh, that period of time. So let me get that one slide on the naming. There it is, okay. So let me share this. Okay, so in terms of what's in a name, um, 
What's in a name? Insurrection versus war. The Philippine-American War was in an armed military conflict between the United States of America and the nascent First Philippine Republic, fought between 1899, I mean 1899 until at least 1902, but it really ran much longer than that into the into the teens or some even people go into the 30s. But you know that, that's a, a, a talk for another time. The conflict arose from a political struggle against the U.S. occupation of the Philippines following the Spanish-American Spanish War. It is also known as the Philippine Insurrection, which the, that was what the Americans put forward and was historically the name most commonly used in the United States. However, Filipinos and some American historians referred to these hostilities as the Philippine-American War. And in 1999, the U.S. Library of Congress reclassified its references to use this term. The conflict officially ended on July 4th, 1902. This date marked the end of the war as far as the United States and the Filipino elite were concerned. However, for the Filipino masses who saw the war against the Americans as a continuing struggle for independence, their resistance lasted longer. And this is a definition from the New World Encyclopedia accessed uh, on the 22nd. And stuff. Yeah, so, that's well. a good point, uh, Abe, because if you read those encyclopedia two decades ago, that's yeah. not the way they describe it. No, because not at like all. you said, it was only in 1999 when they uh, changed the the language and also the entry. Uh, so if we see, for example, now. You're going to need to go to, uh, there you go, MC. Hit, hit your uh, present okay. view. Okay. So, Very good. So like I said in our introduction, if you go to the Union Square, the important uh, event, is in San Francisco. Imagine two presidents commemorating or inaugurating or launching the, the monument commemorating the Battle of Manila Bay. So you see McKinley and you see uh, uh, President Tudor Roosevelt. So if two presidents showed up here, this is important to San Francisco uh -huh. and this is important to the United States. And then, but if you read the book, <laughs> Imperial San Francisco, Little Brown Brothers and your forbidden books, but the book that I love also reading is How to Hide an Empire. You will see that in San Francisco, they cannot hide it because they're there. You need to explain to people uh, this kind of uh, information. Uh -huh. So that's why, I, since 2005, I've been uh, giving lectures and presentation. I said, there should be a continuing discourse to memorialize the accuracy of the Philippine American War and independence. And I use the term Dimapawi because in the Philippines, the term Dimapawi, they cannot remove it. They cannot erase it, oh. something like that. So, and then if you see the materials, because what, uh, Abe was showing to us a while ago was a new edition of the encyclopedia. But if you see the books before, it's, it's, it, the cover is like this. Uh -huh. Uncle Sam's Little Wars, Spanish-American War, Philippine Insurrection. So th those are, they call it Little Wars. But then how can it be Little Wars if you're talking of people, the, the actual cas uh, casualties, so if you see the, uh, the conflict, 4,324 American soldiers killed and the Filipino soldiers, 16,000 killed. And the, and the statistics, uh, okay, from the only statistics, the Filipino were uh, perished during the war for various reasons. Uh, from 250,000 to almost 1 million civilians were killed. Uh -huh. So do you consider this a little war? No. 
Not at all. So, so therefore, just using the statistics, the reason why I'm raising this one, because if you're reading the new books that are being published now, they're more closer to the truth than, than before when it wasn't yet accepted as a Philippine-American war. Because if you go, for example, even in the California State Military Museum, they even mention still the Philippine insurrection, uh -huh. which followed the Spanish-American war. But then they also acknowledge it was the bloodiest and most brutal guerrilla conflict the United States for prior to Vietnam. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah, this I is their it. own this is their own uh, thing, their, their own presentation of the war. Yeah, that's so perfect. of course this these materials are available now online, but again you have to read the their the thing. And the, and that they now put Spanish American war and Philippine American war. Oh. So but then the, the discourse, like when we started, is the naming of the of the war. Yeah. Is it American, uh, Spanish American War, Philippine Insurrection, Philippine War, Philippine American War, U.S. Philippine War, Philippine American War, and I will show later different books which use different terms. And there was even a discourse in our community. How do we call it? Something like that. And sometimes we need to call it also wars. It's not only one war. There, uh -huh. there's Spanish-American war and there's Philippine-American war. But my term is also it's a revolutionary war uh -huh. in the Philippines. But right. never mentioned that it's a revolutionary war. Uh -huh. And then this is the uh, when Abe mentioned about the changing, no, the entry in the uh, Library of Congress catalog. I, I reviewed that and there was this request. When did the Library Congress change their entry of Philippine insurrection materials into Philippine American War? Can you provide me the documents resolution that this is so? That was the post I we questioned. And then the subject heading according to the librarian there, the subject heading changed to Philippine American War was made uh, at the cataloging policy support office editorial meeting on March 25, 1998. Oh, okay. okay. And appeared on the subject headings weekly list. The 2004 edition of the Library of Cong Congress subject heading of which your local library should have a copy shows the new subject heading on page, uh, etc. It yeah. means it's 100 years before they they actually change it yeah you, you see what i mean no so that that's why there's this uh, challenge for us to establish uh and also to assert that it's a war and yeah. it's a revolutionary war and it's a philippine uh war or the philippine american war but the funny thing or not it's not funny but the uh the hard thing to accept Presidio was the launching pad of the war, uh -huh. correct? Right. But then when you go to Presidio, I love Presidio. It's a very beautiful place. Like I said, uh -huh. it reminded me of Jan Hay of Baggio. Uh -huh. But if you see the marker in Presidio, it's, uh, say, formally established September 17, 1776. The San Francisco Presidio has been administered successively as a military headquarters by Spain, Mexico, and the United States, a major command post during the Mexican War, uh -huh. Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. It remains a symbol of United States authority in the Pacific. In the Pacific, and you never mentioned Philippine-American War. No, not at all. You see what I mean? It's not so part there's of the this uh, <laughs> there's this effort that we need to reveal this one, but at the same time we need to assert, okay? Yeah. So and then there's these uh, artifacts, no, of the Ordonius uh, gun were taken from from the Subic during the Spanish American War and Filipino American War, and they were the war price from the Philippines of. And of course, the, the good version here, they put now Filipino nationalists were known as insurrectors by occupying Americans. Yeah. 
So we were insurrectos. <laughs> yeah. We're not revolutionary uh-huh. nationalists. Oh, our ancestors were not revolutionary. And then, uh, and then they put the war in the Philippines. So now in this uh, uh, procedure, they have the use term to this, the Spanish-American War and the Philippine War. Uh-huh. Okay. So this one is in the procedure. But then this one was damaged. And, they, uh-huh. and then I found out that they need to change it, right? They need uh-huh. to replace the marker because uh-huh. it was damaged. Uh-huh. Right? Nobody can read it. And now it's gone. Oh, I see. Okay? Yeah. So now we're, we're trying to rebuild this one, but there's this uh, effort that we're not getting it. So yeah. the, the Ordonius gun is still there, but where, where are the markers that explain the war? Yeah. Okay? And now, of course, you have the Dewey Tower, the Dewey Memorial Tower in Union Square, which, like I said, the Battle of Manila Bay was commemorated there. Uh-huh. But of course, it means prosperity to San Francisco. It's uh-huh. considered the local economy's second gold rush. Because uh-huh. at the turn of the century, there's depression, uh, economic downturn, and the war created the economy. That's why there was a movement, the, Philipp- the San Francisco uh, Beautiful Movement, wherein they put more monuments uh-huh. and monuments and monuments so that when the Americans were coming back, they're celebrating the war because it put them in prosperity. Uh-huh. So, but uh, un- un- unbeknownst to many, uh-huh. 600,000 deaths or almost a million no, yeah. lost their lives. And the Philippine independence was not even provided. And uh, the difficulty is that we became a colony, but U.S. never defined it as a colony. Correct. Okay, so that's a big uh, issue. Yeah, no, that's the, the whole thing of trying to re-educate people in terms of what it really represented. So let, what after... Based on your what you are presenting, I, I'd like to share a, a um, um, an old editorial cartoon from Life magazine from that period of time that talks about uh, some um, uh, sectors in the Philipp- here in the United States who call themselves the anti-imperialists who were opposed to the Philippine American War were making allusions to who what the Filipinos were, that they were fighting a revolutionary war against the United States. So let me get that cartoon up and we'll share it. So let me get that one first and then I'll share my screen. So let's get to that cartoon. Hold on here. Get there, come on. There we go. Okay, so let me share my screen real quick. And there. Share. Okay, so folks, this is from uh, Life Magazine. Actually, it was the precursor of the um, pictorial life, which you know mo- a lot of folks uh, we all grew up with. But uh, before that, it was a, a, a editorial and literary magazine, and they did, and they took actually a anti-war uh, position. They were part of the opposition that opposed the Philippine-American War and that actually the Filipinos should be given their independence. So this is a cartoon here, as you see, Lady Liberty holding a uh, sword and stuff. And then there's two uh, circles here. This is the Hessian shooting down Continentals. And this one right here on the right are US troops shooting down Filipinos. This is life circa 1900. Let me just read the caption. Liberty enlightening the world. It appears that a patriot in the Western Hemisphere is a rebel in the Philippines. Things are naturally being reversed in the antipodes. And as you see, remember the American history, uh, the continental war of the US uh, fighting for independence from Britain and the same thing with the Filipinos. They were fighting for their independence from the US because they had already declared, you know, that's partly part of the discussion is that the Philippines had declared its independence. And uh, on June 12, 1898, uh, um, a nascent republic was established and they were trying to 
establish a, a national government and then sending out envoys around the world to get recognition. But the US would not um, entertain these envoys because they were dead set against uh, granting Filipinos independence, that they were going to be just like everyone else at that period of time. They were um, um, colonizers. They would colonize, um, you know, like Spain, like Britain, they, they all, um, all the European powers, uh, Russia, uh, the, the Dutch, uh, the Belgian, you know, they all conquered in Africa and used brutal military suppression to conquer those countries and nations and people. And that was the same thing that as uh, um, MC was uh, putting forward. And, you know, I also too, that's what really got me into uh, trying to know more about this war. And, and it's these editorial cartoons showing that there was opposition to it, but it wasn't strong enough to, to uh, turn the tide in, in terms of uh, letting the Filipinos become their ind become independent nation and stuff. It, the U.S. Uh, you know launched this brutal war that suppressed and killed you know tens and hundreds of thousands of Filipino civilians and a lot of Filipino combatants and stuff. So you know as we get into our discussion, we'll even. Uh, talk more about this naming thing because the name changed again when um, uh, Roosevelt uh, declared the war ended in 1902, but it actually continued on because you couldn't quell the fires of independence that had been lit around th throughout all the sectors of the masses of the Philippines throughout all the country. So they had to change tactics from it becoming to a war to saying that it was now, you know, just disturbances and minor rebellions and, and folks who were maybe guerrilla generals or fighting a, a, a guerrilla warfare were now bandits and tulisanes. They, the US began to institute, when they instituted civil government in 1901, they began, that changed the whole definition again to, they were starting on a colonial government and under the US uh, leadership, but now those disturbances, which were now before was a, a fight between a, a revolutionary, a war between a, a Philippine government was now turned to disturbances with bandits and, and other, you know, uh, whatever uh, people, who, those who led were, uh, you know, uh, Philippine generals were now considered bandits and stuff unless they, turn themselves over. So, you know, it, it, all this naming thing changes because it's all part of that grand narrative of America that it's always been on a civilizing mission, a democratizing mission and not. So that's why it was an insurrection because the Filipinos were um, revolting against a, a, a duly appointed legal government that the US had gotten by the deal signing that $20 million deal that they got with Spain and stuff. So, you know, it's yeah, all these changing but, but, uh, things, yeah. But Abe, we need to be cl clear. And yeah. also, I, I just want to note the chat uh, comment of Lily, yeah. that we need to, uh, just to clarify, Americans didn't art articulate their control of the Philippines as colonization to other no. Americans, okay? No, so right. that's clear because, uh, if you see the term, how can Roosevelt declare the ending of the war when the U.S. never declared the war against the Philippines? They declare uh -huh. war against the uh, Spani Spanish yeah. because of what happened in Cuba. And of course, uh, it ended in August. Uh, so therefore, the Spanish-American war ended, right? But then yeah. they continue occupying the Philippines until they put their own government. Why will you end it 1902 when it's no more Spanish-American war? The reason I'm, I'm saying this, if you go to the Presidio and also another uh, cemetery of, of, of those war, you will see is there are veterans of Spanish war, uh -huh. Spanish-American -Amer war. So they're U.S. Spanish veterans. So why is like that? Because the U.S. didn't declare the war, so therefore the budget connected to the war is the Spanish-American war. Uh -huh. So therefore, if the relatives, the 
uh, will demand for their benefits of their uh, departed uh, uh, sons or uh, husbands, uh -huh. they cannot use, they died in the Philippines. They need to use their Spanish war veterans. Uh -huh. Because the veterans, it's the Spaniards that they mentioned. Okay, right. so that's why uh, don't get confused. If you see uh, in the cemetery, 1902, he died in Mindanao, but then it, it shows U.S. Spanish veterans. So, and also it doesn't use the term U.S. Empire. If you if you see the text, you read Spanish Empire uh -huh. and British Empire, right. but never U.S. Empire. And then they use uh, in, if you see the later book, they used them territories. Uh -huh. And the Philippines was classified as PI, Philippine Islands, uh -huh. not Republic of the Philippines. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so it's really hiding you know, the, uh -huh. the imperial intention and San right. Francisco is connected to that. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's a good discussion and a good discourse. Perhaps it's about time also to show what kind of books that we can read, no, to yeah. to understand this. Because one conversation in the afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon, cannot capture the whole discussion for this. Although, like I said, even yeah. in our history classes, sometimes they don't have much time to discuss the Spanish American War and the Philippine American War. Yeah. And then like your date is 1902. And if I showed, uh, it's extended up to 1913 uh, because of the Mindanao conflict too. Yeah. Okay. So um, did, did you want to start sharing some of the titles or, or I can- Yeah, I, yeah. So, uh, we, so the good thing now is we have- uh, Recently, I collected the books uh, for this uh, presentation. And the good book that I discovered, I purchased recently, you can also get it online, is the three volume of this Spanish American War and Philippine American Wars. See, it's, it's plural wars. So you have yeah. to differentiate the Spanish American War and the Philippine American Wars. The good thing about this book, uh, uh, it's an encyclopedia. So any subject matter or topic or person of importance, you can read that. And then they have a good uh, discussion. And I, I I read some of them and they're very good. They're, they're, they're more on the modern interpretation of the war. They're not uh -huh. the pre-1999 uh, uh, where the Library of Congress were still using the insurgency. That's why it's a good uh, text and they're more sympathetic of what really happened rather than yeah. what's the propaganda uh, in the U.S. before. Yeah. And then, of course, your book, this is your book, and uh, you, you show them your, the cartoon, but if they can see the, the book, uh, I can show you the book, this thick, and it's beautiful, and and if you read the text, it, it was very, very uh, uh, well researched and well written. Yeah, uh, thank and you. And then uh, my favorite is the Imperial San Francisco. So there are many uh, landmarks and also reason why San Francisco benefited much in the war. And this one, although it's published here, but uh, Archipelago Bookstore also sell this one because I recommended to Marie Romero before. Oh. Uh, we should we should include this in our books, just like in the Film Center. Yeah. It's not only those books that are uh, uh, written or produced from the Philippines. It's better to get some books that describe these uh, Philippines. Yeah. So this one is really highly recommended. Oh no! And that's... of course, this one is the How to Hide an Empire. Because uh, not only the Philippines, but also it includes Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and the other territories of the United States. Because this one's the greater United States. So the Americans were only mainland oriented. Yeah. So that's why even when we, if you see the immigration patterns, right? 
Uh-huh. We were classified as U.S. nationals, right? But we're not treated, although you're a colony, but they're not. You're not. You don't have the the benefits. So yeah. this one is also highly recommended. So about you, uh, hey, what do you recommend books? Oh, okay. Here I'll. I'll I have a. Uh... Oh, you want me to show my collection first? Yeah, go ahead. Do your okay. collection, and then I'll share some of the. I, I'll then I'll share uh, items that we have at the library. Okay, this one is Republic or Empire. When Daniel uh, Shermer was still active, uh, I I met her. He's uh, active in the anti Marcos and the uh, anti Marcos movement, and also friends of the Filipino people. And she has a good collection because his memories of the anti imperialist league, no, uh, is well documented uh, in yeah. his uh, book, and it's also one of the uh, active members no, during his time. And a number of the progressive uh, activists from the Philippines were very close to Daniel Shermer. Yeah, no, great book. But it's really not easy to read because it's really text, text, text. Yeah, yeah. And then this one, when I was in high school, that's when I read this one. Because like I said, it's not a thick book. It's a small book. Because after you read Constantino, you want other sources, right? And the Filipino Martyrs was a, a, a book. And then later is the Little Brown Brothers. These are my early books that I yeah. started in the Philippines. And then now, and then you have, of course, uh, the Filipino scholars here and the undergraduate and the graduate students are trying to uh, decolonize uh, uh, our or to provide the new narratives no, of, that, of that history. So there are many essays on the American empire and it's nice to get them uh, read. And then of course, see, I, I will also show you the different naming based yeah. on their book. Like this one is Philippine War right. by Lin. It's also a good book. And also uh, from the Philippines, Samuel uh, Tan, made it it's a philippine american war and then the date is 18 19 1913 and samuel tan was uh was a professor at the university of the philippines is also coming from the tausug uh, tribe so therefore he understood that the war was extended right. in that area the and then of course there's this uh in our image uh american empire something like that and yeah. there's even a good uh uh, section, not next section, uh, excerpt there that the person uh, who killed Lawton was uh, Hieronimo. All right, General Hieronimo. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the person who killed Lawton was also Hieronimo. Yeah. Okay. So these are lean, and these are the other books that are good to read. Okay, so now what's your collection or what okay. do you recommend? I'll, I'll, and what is present in the film center that they yeah. can also get into? Yeah, let me share a, a few uh, uh, books that we have at the uh, center. Uh, one that I highly recommend is uh, by uh, Milagros Camayon Guerrero, Apple oh, Publishing, oh. 2016. It's uh, Luzon at War, Contradictions in Philippine Society, 1898 to 1902. This is based on her... Uh, PhD thesis, and uh, the, I'll just read the, the, the publisher's uh, um, description of it. This, the book puts forth a series of questions about the colonial origins of the nation, the tensions between state and society, the role of intelligentsia, and the resistance of ordinary people that successive generations of scholars are still seeking to come to terms with. It remains most arguably the most astute critique of the first Philippine Republic laying bare many of the sources of today's political and social problems. And, and it's totally on, on the mark. You, once you read this book, you really understand Philippine society as it was about to uh, emerge into the 20th century and, and what the revolution would have brought, or it, even though it failed, what the US just took over in terms of um, you know, keeping the elites in power, keeping the landlords in power, and, and what have you. And reading this book uh, will 
just uh, really solidify your understanding of, of Philippine society. So uh, that's one of, and this is wow. not a physical book, but it's on our digital uh, books and it's on Hoopla. So which, which means any number of people can read this book at once. Oh, not it's like digitized? Our, pardon? It's digitized? Yes, it's a digital version. We don't oh, have the physical okay. version. Okay. So people can get it on our Hoopla uh, format, which means, uh, like I said, um, many numbers of people can read it all at once. If, if you go to like our uh, Libby uh, site, there may be only like four copies of a particular book available based on the uh, licensing that we do. But with Hoopla, you many dozens, hundreds of people could read this all, book all at once and then have a book talk about it. So anyway, this, this is one. Oh, I, that's I, great to know. Yeah, yeah. Because so, it, even me, I was never uh, familiar with this book because- Oh, no, I'm, you, you, it's, it's a definitely a top read for you. Uh, okay, yeah. And, oh. and uh, this one will be part of the library soon. It's uh, the Philippine Insurrection Against oh, the United States. I like that, yeah. Yeah, um, I have a set uh, that I'm donating uh, to the library. Uh, you know, I, I have this idea that, um, you know, I, I've been collecting books since the 70s and this is among them. And um, most academic libraries like colleges of, in University of California and around the country have copies of this, but no public institutions. I think maybe New York Public Library might have a set but we would be the only public library on the West Coast to have uh, this set available to people, which gives people a sense of the uh, what was going on in the ground among uh, the Philippine independence fighters. So this is a compilation of documents and notes and introduction of five actually, volumes. Actually, yeah. Actually in the Philippines, it's Renato Constantino who was uh, tasked to, to review and-, and, and uh, Right annotate these books right. and you can also get them online. Yeah, They're, so uh, yeah. yeah. But at least the, you have the physical book because sometimes reading to uh, yeah, on a digital version, sometimes it's not a good reading because you have to stay with your computer or your tablet for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So that will hopefully will get entered graded into our reference collection uh, early part of next year. Okay, so, great. Uh, yeah, so any other books that I'm recommending, uh, like uh, MC was mentioning, these are part of the uh, Philippine Col American Center collection. We have the uh, Constantino's book, A Past Revisited in English, but we also have the uh, Filipino or Tagalog version of, of the book, Ang Bagong Lumipas, number one. So you can read if those of you who are learning Tagalog or advanced Tagalog and you want to give it a, a shot, you can read Constantino's uh, A Past Revisited in, in Filipino or Tagalog. Uh, we have both versions. And as uh, uh, MC was mentioning, we also have a copy of circulating copy of Republic or Empire. And then also Jim Zwick, the late Jim Zwick, put together a, a compilation of the writings of uh, and work of, of Mark Twain, who was an ardent supporter of Philippine independence and was part of the Anti-Imperialist League. So that book is also available. Also, we have these four uh, books that wow. you can check out. We have David Fagan, who was a brave African-American soldier who became part of the Filipino Revolutionary Army to fight against his own US Army. So he was one of the most sought after and hated um, Philippine, I mean, African-American soldiers. He was definitely wanted. Uh, General Funston had a mania about him of trying to capture this man because of his audacity as an African-American uh, man to, to join the side of the Filipinos. Uh, the other book that I'm recommending that we have uh, for circulation is Bandoleros, Outlawed Guerrillas of the Philippine-American War in 1903. 1907 by Orlino Ochoa. And these are what I was alluding to earlier. After um, 1902, after the war was declared over, uh, people were now considered bandits, bandoleros or tulisans or what have you. And, but they were continuing the fight for freedom, even on a smaller scale. 
but they were demonized and, and later uh, captured and hung, many of them, like uh, Simeon Ola and, uh, gosh, I'm having a senior moment here, um, MC, uh, uh, help me out. Who is the other one who was hung? Um, Makario Sakai? Yeah, Mario Sakai. So th these are the Makario. People, yeah, Makario Sakai. So these are the people that are in part of Bandoleros. And then another one about uh, local resistance, uh, Brasil uh, Mojares, he wrote The War Against the Americans about the um, resistance and collaboration in Cebu. And then finally, uh, another book that we have, uh, which is critical of the Philippine American War was by David Silby, uh, A War of Frontier and a War of an, an Empire, also about the Philippine American War. So all the titles are available through um, the, Philip, the San Francisco Public Library and the Filipino American Center. That's just part of the collection that we have. There's a roughly, categorized under Filipino American War about 70 plus books and stuff. So there's a lot to read about there, but I just wanted to highlight uh, just eight of titles that uh, you can begin to, if you want to delve more into the, to this uh, part of our history as Filipinos. Uh, these are some of the books that you might want to consider. So anyway. Yeah, that's very good, Abe, because yeah. if you see my background in the Zoom, I really put the, Film Center. So those who haven't been to the San Francisco Public Library even before the pandemic, uh -huh. there is a Film Center in the uh, third floor of the San Francisco Public Library. Yeah. And these are where you can find the books, perhaps because uh, Abe is the one coordinating the center, perhaps we can really highlight the the Spanish American War, Philippine American War, and the Philippine occupation uh, yeah. uh, period the can be selected so that those uh, Filipino American or even the general public who want to know about that particular period when America entered the, or occupied the Philippines or colonized the Philippines, at least they have something uh, to mention. And also, it's important it's important to to refer to the different libraries because they're opening now their libraries and oh. they have good collection. I yeah. want to. Uh, make uh, notice to my good friend and brother uh, Ato Ramos who, uh -huh. who continuously digging uh, what I call gems information because he get them from the library during the turn of the century, the, the 1920s, something like that, describing the Filipinos in the Philippines. Right. So it means that there are uh, plenty or enormous uh, information no, that we can uh, dig and also reread our history. Yeah. And so it's important for others to get interested in this reading. It's no more the scarcity of, of, uh, of documents or books. So yeah. it's good you, we, you have your collection and a number of your collection, I don't even have a copy. So perhaps it's, it's great to know what others have, they can also share to us because this conversation is not only between Abe and me, it's a conversation to everybody. So those who are teaching uh, Philippine studies, it's also good to encourage people to go to the library again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, that's part of our, our mission here at the library is to support our institutions like um, the Philippine Studies at City College of San Francisco. You know, when I do my, a lot of my selection, I have in mind, you know, th things that are not, not, not only popular, but also historical or cultural things that might be of value to uh, students at, at those institutions like City College or SF State or uh, where, where have you around the Bay Area or even uh, throughout California because we can, or around wherever, people can uh, borrow books through uh, Link Plus or interlibrary loan and stuff. So it's really um, a part of our mission to make sure we have a, a good collection that will serve all different needs and especially important needs like this, where we're trying to understand our, our history and the legacy and, and trying to decolonize and stuff. You know, that's part of the, the movement now to trying to get rid of those uh, backward uh, looking ways and stuff of how we understood ourselves, you know.
So I don't know, do, do we want to open up for questions from the audience, uh, MC, or from our- Yeah, but before that, if yeah, I can yes. show the- Oh yeah, you, do, why don't you show kind of some of the stuff you're, you're doing contemporary-wise, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah, continue first, and I, I'm trying to get my- Your screen up? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just share a kind of a, a, one of the cartoons from the Forbidden Book that's kind of the iconic image of what uh, the Americans were, were up to and stuff. So uh, here we go. Can people see that screen? It's up to them. Yes. Okay, so th this is really one of the, when I come across this image, it, it really speaks volumes about essentializing what the American mission was and stuff. And what it was, as you can see, Uncle Sam's holding two options to the Filipino and he's saying, Uncle Sam to Filipinos, you can take your choice. I have plenty of both. And this is from Puck Magazine, November 20th, 1901. And the author was, I mean, the artist was Joseph Kepler Jr. and stuff. And so here you have the, the soldier on the, in Uncle Sam's right hand with the Craig Jorgensen. And then you have the American teachers who later came on, uh, gosh, I'm having a, a senior moment again. What's the ship that they came on? The Thomasites. So here we go. Here's the Thomasites here who were going to bring Filipinos education and civilization and what have you and stuff. And uh, so there was that moment uh, when they were negotiating, you know, uh, Aguinaldo had just been captured and I, I don't quite remember when he took the oath of allegiance and stuff but so they were still prosecuting the war at that point in time and but they were also beginning to bring in teachers as they were establishing civil government in areas where the u.s had under control so looking at this cartoon you really see what the u.s was about to launch or continuing to launch the military operation as mc mentioned there were 126,000 troops in, in the Philippines. That was not a little war. They were all over the Philippines trying to put down, uh, you know, the revolutionary fires of, of Filipinos that wanted to be independent and free and stuff. So there you go. This is it. Are you ready, MC? Yeah. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. So are you seeing this one? Yeah, monuments and markers. Yeah, so like I said uh, in our introduction, my presentation for one and a half hours also during the history day in San Francisco, I gave a virtual, virtual tour uh, uh, on the landmarks and markers and monuments uh, connected to the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. Philippine American War, Spanish American War. Okay. Of course, the first is the, oh, this is the map, right? Do you see this okay. one? Okay. Yeah. These yeah. are the, the red one are the, are, are the monuments and markers you can find in San Francisco. Okay. And then, and then the, the point of interest one is, of course, at the heart of San Francisco is Union Square. And then if you go to the Union Square I mentioned a while ago, it was two presidents no, who were uh, here during the uh, groundbreaking and also inauguration. But then there was this marker we put. no. But then if you read the marker, would you want to read the marker, right? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, OK. Uh, it's a little tiny. I can't quite see it so great. OK, I will yeah. read it because okay. I. I it says the Battle of Manila Bay and the Philippine American War. Okay. The people of the Philippines struggled against Spanish colonial rule for over 300 years. At the outbreak of the Spanish American War, Filipinos joined with American forces and rejoiced in Commodore D George Dewey's decisive defeat of the archipelago's Spanish fleet in the on in the May 1st, 1898. 1888, 1898, Battle of Manila Bay. Within month of that uh, 
naval victory, the Philippines declared its freedom from Spain, marking June 12, 1898 as Philippine Independence Day. Philippine, uh -huh. Filipinos took the historic occasion to declare their national sovereignty and to establish the first republic of record in Southeast Asia. The Spanish-American War ended with the Treaty of Paris in December 1898. However, the United States' continued military presence in the Philippines led to the conflict later known as the Philippine-American War. In the dark period, 4,400 American soldiers died together with 20,000 Filipino combatants. Civilian lives lost number in the hundreds of thousands. Philippines remained a colony of the United States from 1899 to 1935 and granted Commonwealth status thereafter. The crucible of World War II banded together the United States and the Philippines as never before against a common enemy. The extraordinary sacrifice and heroism of Filipinos in that struggle for freedom led to the United States acknowledgement of Philippine Independence Day on July 4, 1946. So this is a Philippine-American War Centennial Committee, San Francisco, California, 2019. Uh -huh. This is the version, but it's not necessarily the best version of uh -huh. our interpretation of the situation. Right. Because if you read the first paragraph, okay, it says, Filipino joint forces with American forces and rejoice. So the Filipino joint American. You no. see what I mean? Yeah. The context, it, it, it's a wrong narrative. Yeah. It's our revolutionary war. They never yeah. mention it's a revolutionary war. Right. So that's why I said, on the one hand, we want to interpret those uh, markers and monuments. But we need to involve scholars and community to really what is the narrative. That's why this uh, conversation is important. We need yeah. to raise those issues. It's right. not necessarily if Filipino put something in this marker, you, you already have the good thing. But at the same time, this is important because during the Black Lives Matter, some monuments are being removed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like the Civil War. And if you go to others, like for example, the Pioneers Monument, uh -huh. okay, and they and you see uh, uh, the priest no, is calling the Indian, right? Right. But then, because of the new narrative approach in a, in the uh, historical movement, they the California Native Americans wanted to reinterpret that monument, right. so they explain no the oh. the casualties and atrocities that was committed to them during yeah. the Pioneers Monument. Right. That was our inspiration why we advocated from the Arts Commission to put a marker in the Union Square. Mm. Because we don't want to remove the Union Square, but we need to have our narrative. No? Mm. Because like I said, this, you can, uh, America uh, is trying to erase it, right? So mm. don't remove it, but we need to highlight our, our version of history. So oh. this is the, that's why this version doesn't capture, but at least uh, uh, the the effort of putting something uh, like this one is already in place. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the uh, that's one ethnotourism uh, interest, and of course the volunteers monument. When you see the volunteers monument, you know, in Dolores uh, Street, you will see those who who fought in uh, in the Philippine and the Spanish American War. Uh -huh. And then I mentioned this a while ago. They they still not mentioning the Philippine American War. Right. I'm mentioning that. Okay. Yeah. And then you have the Ordonias before they have the markers, right? They explain the the Philippine American War, Spanish American War. Now they disappeared. Yeah. War in the Philippines, and now it was destroyed. And then they they get and then they disappeared. And uh -huh. then you have also Mackinley. Uh, President McKinley also has a monument <laughs> related. And then you have the first thing, no? which oh, is yeah. uh, responsible in Mindanao. Right. And even the uh, chaplain McKinnon in Golden Gate Park. Oh. <laughs> Nobody knew this person, but then there's a monument uh, 
related to that is the chaplain of the war. So oh. that's why part of our interest, not only in books and readings, but it's also having the tour in the in in San Francisco, and you learn more about the uh, legacy of the war, yeah. the Imperial War in San Francisco. Yeah. So so like I said, there are many artifacts related to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like I said. In Dimapawi in Tagalog, it means it won't be erased, removed uh -huh. or eradicated. It is our task to unlearn and learn our own history from our point of view as Filipinas. So if there are markers like that, we need to put our narrative. But of course, we need to consult scholars and community in yeah. putting those narratives. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely. Because what's happening now in the volunteers, like in Minnesota, uh -huh. the those who are commemorating the role of the volunteers joining the Spanish-American War, uh -huh. they, need, they did their own uh, markers uh, in addition to the markers no, that uh -huh. were placed uh, in commemoration of the uh, war. I see. Okay. So perhaps we can open up for discussion. So this yeah. is our conversation. I hope it will encourage people to visit San Francisco, go to the Film Center to see books, and also go to the uh, historical markers and monuments for understanding the Philippine American War uh, in yeah okay oh, hey, no, I... Nancy, that was so many books and so much great knowledge um, and I tried to keep up folks and there's a link that I put in the chat okay but we have one question okay and it's um, by the 1920s and 30s the suppression of the Philippine independence movement, was within living memory. So were the Philippine SCOTUS, American Foreign Legion, viewed with mixed feelings or even hostility by some Filipinos by that time? Hmm. I don't know, you wanna to touch, tackle that one, uh, MC? What's your thoughts I, I on? I don't really uh, understand the question. Uh... Yeah, well, why, don't you, why don't you restate it again, Anissa? Sorry. No worries, no worries. And you can also click on the Q&A there at the bottom. Oh, it's under Q&A. I was looking yeah, at chat, sorry. Yeah. And we could also um, unmute uh, folks if they want to ask a live question. Um, Wayne, and this is from Wayne. If you wanted to unmute Wayne and ask this question directly, you could. Yeah, go, go ahead. Hi there. Hi. Um, I was referring to the Philippine scouts. Uh huh. So that was um, the American presence uh -huh. using local Filipinos. Right. So wouldn't that have produced some, you know, uh, I think by that time there was still people who remembered that yeah. there was an independence movement. Right. <laughs> You know, I think it was pretty, if it was earlier in the period, you know, like with the Philippine constabulary, you know, when it was, uh, and then later on the scouts, there was m more hostility, but by, we're talking about like by the twenties and thirties, that that's already a long time ago. So I, I, I'm not quite sure that, um, I'm sure there were some mixed feelings, but I think just the general, uh, hostility, maybe in certain sectors, maybe like in Mindanao, if things were still simmering, that's where there would be more animosity and, and hatred of, of the scouts or the Philippine constabulary. Because like you said, the whole thing of using a, a native uh, armed force to suppress your own people, but from differing sector, I mean, from different parts of the country. So, you know, the, it, it, it would, you know, enrage those already possible long simmering uh, hostilities between, you know, uh, uh, Muslim folks down in Mindanao who are getting suppressed by soldiers who were from uh, wherever, Patangas or Pampanga or whatever. So that there definitely were probably those hostilities, don't you think, uh, MC? I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and also colonial, uh, colonial master usually uh, apply what they call the divide and rule. They yeah. use the native to fight the other native. Like, for example, Emilio Aguinaldo's uh, capture by Fulton, 
mm. was using the Makabebe scouts right. recruited from Pampanga. Right. And so you have people like that. So sometimes they attributed the animosity between tribes because mm. one particular tribe is used to, to defeat other tribe. But it's not only tribe, but uh, uh, a certain mercenary also because... Mm. Uh, they were used during the Spanish time and they were used during the American time. So there are certain scouts that really function uh, for for whoever in power. Yeah. And of course, you have also the guerrilla, what, but the the statesmen were the insurrectos and their bandidos, no? The, yeah. That they have their own uh, community, but of course, there's the reconcentration or the what you call the you you're trying to diffuse or uh, and isolate that community. Yeah. So then, uh, uh, of course, when the introduce the Thomasites and also the education, and also getting the leaders, no Filipino leaders, act as if they're American. Uh -huh. So the anti-American feeling. Was soft and all. Of course, there were still uh, like the flag law. You cannot raise the uh, uh, Philippine nationalism. So it's yeah. really a, a, a movement, but it, but uh, it's part of the pacification campaign. Uh -huh. In the pacification campaign, they don't declare it as a war. That's why when when the Americans learn about it, when it was declared uh, end of the war. It doesn't mean it end the war. Uh -uh. It's a pacification campaign, but it's still a war. They're yeah. using the Scots now, and they're using Filipino leaders speaking in behalf of the American interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. that's the yeah, that's the whole point. Pacification, and then not articulating your your colonization or colony as a real colony. You know, uh, you know, uh, Professor Villarosa brings out a. a really strong point you you just that's another point of hiding the reality behind the civilizing mission and stuff of the overall alleged civilizing mission any any, any other thoughts from folks or comments people want to raise or anything yeah hopefully it's been helpful useful discussion or yeah the purpose of our uh, conversation today is really just to excite and uh, spark interest for yeah. people to understand that there's a chapter like for example they considered Philippine American War as the first Vietnam yeah. and then when the news about Af Afghanistan uh, withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan oh you forget you were in the Philippines before <laughs> uh -huh. yeah and withdrew Okay, Amanda Quintas raise hand. Okay, Amanda, you can you can speak now. Yeah. Hello, you mentioned uh, Professor Rilio Raza. Um, do they have a, a book or a specific um, Philippine American War resource that is available? Uh, well, I cannot she, speak for for, for Lillian. Lily. Yeah, for Professor. Yeah. Are you on Lillian still? Are you still with us? She's still here. She is, and I have unmuted. Allowed. Yeah. Would you like to speak, uh, Lillian? Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. 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 Prof. Hi. Hi. MC. Hi. Um, yeah, just I, I don't have any books out. Um, I, I teach Philippine history at City College San Francisco and I chair the Philippine Studies Department. Um, but, you know, the, these are wonderful. I, I'm just really appreciative of these conversations um, that are happening. And I'm more than happy to have conversations with other folks. So, oh, yeah, um, let's let's have another conversation. Let's have yeah. Yeah, and hopefully if, I, if the library is open, we can have a small conversation in the film center, of yeah. course, uh, considering the health and safety protocol. But uh, getting them introduced to the books, it's really wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I just wanted to add on to uh, what I've been helping uh, Professor Vilya Raza with is, like I mentioned, I've been collecting a lot of books over the, since the mid-70s and stuff. So part of 
my donating my collection to for, for future generations. I'm helping her develop a, a reading room for the uh, Philippine Studies program. So uh, books from my collection and then uh, from other scholars that have donated uh, their Filipiniana and Filipino American uh, studies books will also become part of their collection too. So, you know, both us and uh, here at the Philam Center here at, at, at SFPL and also the uh, Philippine Studies will have these nice robust reading rooms, which, you know, uh, students and the community can, can use to, to learn more about uh, these issues and stuff in this histories. And also on my part, because I'm still doing the, what I call the ethno tour, and oh. I have two ethno tours. One is the Soma Pilipinas uh, Neighborhood Heritage Tour, which now it's getting exciting because there are new markers that uh, shows our Filipino presence in this neighborhood. Oh. And then at the same time, I have my favorite tour, which is the Philippine American Tour of History, which is the uh, exciting uh, markers and monuments on the uh, Philippine, Spanish American War, Philippine American War, and the connection to the Philippines, and oh. and I have many anecdotes and fun history to to share also. Yeah, related to that. Yeah, I'm glad you're bringing them back. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Friends, that was amazing, and it's so deep. And I tried to add notes as we went along, everyone. Oh no, yeah. Thank you for all the uh, all the the notes you were bringing up, Anissa, to help oh, people, yes. uh, na navigate to the resources. And I will try to, um, you know, get connect with MC and Abe in the next week and try to get a full book list from you all of the books that were were in this yeah. presentation, so we can add it to the document, which I'm putting in the chat box one more time. And if you wanna watch this again or share it with your friends and family, you can watch this and many other great programs on our San Francisco Public Library YouTube channel. Yeah. Abe and MC, gosh, you are brilliant humans and I appreciate you all for sharing such knowledge. And Abe, I can't wait to check out your book. Okay. Amazing. All right, friends, I'm going to call it unless there's any last comments from our audience. Can I say before we end oh, one last? Oh. Yeah, go for it, MC. Wait, I, I want to share. Uh... I want to share. OK, oh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to have you all close it out. I'm not going to come back on. But uh -huh. big thank you to you, Abe and MC. And okay. The community. OK, so, yeah, so we'll 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 end on MC's uh, sharing. Go ahead, MC. Okay, are, are you seeing this one? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. In the Philippine War? Yeah, and the medals. And the medals, read the medal. Uh, Very tiny, MC. It's Philippine Insurrection. Oh. Ah. See? So, so some soldiers got that as, as a... Um, as a uh, their badge. Their badge, their badge of, to uh, show that they serve. They they fought in the against the Filipino. Okay, so I just want to end that. Okay, hey, that's uh, pretty cool. So, okay. uh, how, do you know how many uh, soldiers got that? <laughs> <laughs> it means that when the presidio was uh, turned over to the uh -huh. to the government from the yeah. U.S. Army, right. there are many documents or artifacts and and materials like that. The flag from the Philippines. Oh the, wow. The medals, the whatever, because what the Philipp what the Americans they don't know about the Philippines, they start uh, collecting, collecting. But right. because we don't have storage, we 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 lost a number of them. So oh. we need to have a Philippine American War uh, storage or museum so that yeah. people we can go just like what uh, we have on books. But we need to have this kind of documents. Right. So that's what, what, what that's my advocacy to to oh, have okay. a Philippine American War museum oh okay okay all righty okay thank you all right everyone have a good afternoon thank you for joining us